Good morning, everyone. Uh, so last week, I shared the news that my family and I are going to soon be leaving CCMC. Um, God has led us to a new church that is right near my parents in Minnesota. And that means February 19th is going to be my last day here as your pastor. Now, on the one hand, I definitely see the Lord's hand in this and sense his calling to this new church. Um, but I'm also going to miss you guys. And Chanel and the kids are going to miss you guys too. So I know this is a uh, surprising news to, to many of you. Um, and it's going to bring change. So I wanted to do what I want to do today is help everyone to process this. And so bring it before the Lord. That's what we're always supposed to do. Whenever we feel strong emotions, we need to process them. But the way that we need to process them is by bringing them to God and hearing what he says. And so I'm sure some of you are probably feeling anxious about what this means for CCMC. You might be thinking, who's going to be our next English pastor? How long are we going to be without a pastor? What's going to happen in the meantime? Are people going to leave if we don't have a pastor? There's a lot of unknowns. There's changes ahead. And it's natural in situations like this to feel concerned, even worried about what's going to happen. But I want to reassure you today by reminding you whose you are. You belong to the Lord. You are his people. The Lord has looked after CCMC for 50 years, and he is going to continue to look after this church. The Lord is with us. He is for us because we are his children, and he loves us. He knows the path. That we're about to walk. He has designed that path and is orchestrating it, and he is going to be with us on this journey. This is the message we get here in Psalm 121. I still remember the first time I heard this psalm, or at least remember ever reading it. I was in another church, and we were going through a time of pastoral transition in that church. Uh, we were waiting and praying to see who God would send as our next pastor, and one of the lay leaders of the church got up, and he preached this psalm, and God used these words to release me personally from some of the fears that I was feeling in that time and to reignite my faith in him. And I'm praying that God would do the same thing for all of us this morning. The Lord is always with us. He is guarding every step that we take. The Lord is our guardian. He protects his people. And today, we're going to consider what kind of a guardian he is for us. So let's ask God, as we come to him in his word, to comfort us, to encourage our hearts this morning, and to reignite our faith in him again. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you burdened by emotion. We come to you with uh, fears and worries, with grief and sadness, with confusion uh, with uncertainty, with a sense of inadequacy, with so many different feelings. And we pray, Lord, that you would minister to our soul this morning. That you'd speak to us the words that we need to hear. That you would lead us in our eyes back to you, that we might look to you again as our Savior, as our King, as our provider, as our guardian, and rejoice in what a good guardian you are for your people. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord is our guardian. Six times in this psalm, the psalmist describes the Lord as a God who keeps or guards his people. And this is a message that he wanted believers to sing together, to remember uh, with each other as they were on their journeys to Jerusalem, because Psalm 121 is a collection, part of a collection of psalms here called the Song of Ascents. So religious pilgrims would sing these psalms together as they made their way up to God's city, up to Jerusalem, to celebrate the annual feasts. It's a road trip psalm that pilgrims would sing on their way to God's city. And if you think about it, that's a journey that we're all on in life. 
we are pilgrims. And those of us who have put our faith in Christ are trekking toward that great celestial city on life's journey. Life, as we all know, is a journey. It's got ups and downs. It's got twists and turns, some of which we're not expecting. But if you're a follower of Jesus, yours is a long journey home. You may not know what's around the next bend, but you know two things that can make all the difference. Two things that let God's people press on in hopeful confidence. First, we know where the path leads, that we're headed home. And we know that God is going to be with us every step of the way. That's the things that we need to know. We're going somewhere good. And our good God is going to be with us all the way there. The psalmist says to God's people in verse 5, the Lord is your keeper, your guardian. What a guardian he is. Here we see three reasons why the Lord is the perfect guardian for us. To start with, we see that the Lord is meticulously attentive as a guardian. Now, if you go and watch a movie and, uh, you know, the good guys have to get past the guards to get into somewhere, there's a few different ways they can do it. Oftentimes, they'll create a diversion to get the attention of the guards and the guards will go over there and then the, the good guys head this way to get around them. But no one can do that to God. God cannot be distracted. God is infinitely attentive. He can give his full attention to literally everything. He's like that parent whose young child is just starting to walk. I remember those days. You watch every footstep with care in those first steps, making sure that they don't trip over something. Or, you know, you're watching every Cheerio make it into their mouth so that they don't choke. Your nose is always on alert for that next stinky diaper. Your child gets your full attention and you're always on the lookout for danger. But the Lord is even more attentive with us, his children. Look at verses 1 to 3. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. The Lord will not let your foot be moved. You get to a point in life's journey sometimes where you get into some challenging terrain. Maybe there's a narrow path going around a mountain. And as you plant your foot on some loose gravel, you feel like your foot is about to slip. And that's when the Lord will reach down and he'll grab hold of your foot to keep you from falling. He keeps us secure. And he does this every single time, every footstep he watches over. Because the Lord is our guardian, and he's a great guardian because he is meticulously attentive. Now, even when you're trying your hardest as a parent of a young child, at some point, you are going to get distracted, you're going to lose focus, and of course, that's always when it happens. You turn your head for a couple seconds, and then they trip, and they fall down, and they get hurt, or they put something in your mouth, and you're like, sit, and you start fishing in their mouth. And you feel so bad. You feel like you've failed them. You're sad. You're disappointed in yourself. You feel like you had one job and you just failed. You're ashamed, angry with yourself. That happens to everybody. And it happens because everybody's human. No one can be perfectly attentive. We are weak. We are going to fail as parents. And we're going to fail a lot as every parent can testify. But God is a very different kind of parent. God has never failed his children, not one time. He has never gotten distracted. He has never failed to protect them. He will not let our foot slip. The text does not say God tries to keep our feet stable. He tries to keep us from falling. He wants to keep us from falling. No, it says he will not let our foot slip. He makes this impossible. Because as soon as we start to lose traction, he stabilizes us time after time. And he can do this every time because he is perfectly attentive. Nothing gets by him. 
He's the kind of guardian we wish that we could be for our children. He's always looking out for us. And in our time of need, he always comes to the aid of his children. Help always comes. Because as the psalmist reminds us in verse 2, our help comes from the Lord. Now, I'm not saying life is easy as a Christian. Not at all. The psalmist isn't saying that God keeps all suffering away from us. Sometimes we do literally trip and fall. Sometimes we make mistakes and trip and fall in a metaphorical way. But he will not let us fall spiritually. That's because the Lord is always looking out for us, stabilizing our feet, protecting us as our guardian. He is always by our side on our journey. He goes with us. And so we, as God's children in Christ, can have total confidence that the same God who began a good work in us will bring it to completion. That the Lord who called us to follow him will also empower us so we can do that and protect us on our long journey home. Look, it's not clear what God has planned for CCMC in 2023. None of us know. He alone knows what's around the corner. And that's okay. Because we know enough to know that we're going to be okay. That much is clear to us. The Lord is our watchful guardian. He is with us on this journey, making sure we don't slip. And with his help, we will make it through. He will not let us fall into Satan's clutches and be destroyed. He will protect us from spiritual harm and stabilize our feet on the firm foundation of Christ. And he will do this time and time again without ever failing, because unlike us, God's resources are infinite. He's got infinite attention, infinite energy, infinite time available. He is our meticulously attentive guardian who will not let our foot ever slip. But personally, what amazes me even more about him as he does this is that he bothers to do this at all. I mean, he is the Lord God. He is the Lord who created heaven and earth and us. And what does he want to do? What does he give his attention to? He wants to keep his children's little feet from slipping. God's not thinking, I'm busy, I'm focused on other things, I've got a universe to maintain. He's not busy. He's not too busy for his children. Nor is he a distant and detached guardian who just kind of stands back and intervenes only when duty calls. The Lord is an involved, caring, attentive parent. He intervenes in our lives constantly, continually caring for us, showering us with grace, because he loves us. When he acts to protect you and guard you, it is just another way that he is showing you how much he loves you. The Lord loves you like his child, because that is what you are in Christ. So he not only can help, but he wants to help you. The Lord has chosen to become our parent and to adopt us as his children. So he functions as our guardian now. And he pays very careful attention to us, intervening like parents do to keep our feet from stumbling. And because he's God, he can do this every single time without fail. He is the best guardian there is. So you can trust him in this season. You don't need a guardian angel to do this. The Lord himself is already doing this for you. He's protecting you in love. He's watching over you. He's not going to let your foot slip. The Lord wants you to know this. So he tells it to you in his word. He doesn't just take care of you. He wants you to know that you are being taken care of. Because he wants you to be able to rest in his care. To trust him. Even in those times where he is making you wait for something. He doesn't want you to worry about tomorrow or next month or next year. He wants you to know that you are not alone, but he is with you. 
He's going to be with you in the days ahead. So the next time you feel anxious about your future for whatever reason, or about the church's future, don't resign yourself to that anxiety. Challenge it. Bring your faith to bear on it. Remind yourself who your guardian is. Remind yourself where your help comes from. Remember, he is watching out for you. He will not let your foot slip. And ask him in faith to relieve that fear, take away that worry, and help you to trust him to provide. Where does our help come from? Doesn't come from our own strength. Doesn't come from the books that we read. Doesn't come from how many people are here to help us. Doesn't come from our efforts to secure ourselves and our church. Our help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. The Lord who can do anything. No matter what lies around the bend, no matter how challenging the terrain may become, he will never, ever let you fall. Instead, he will help you to keep going. Second thing we need to see about our guardian and remember is that he's the almighty. This really addresses another way you see in the movies of how the good guys get around the guards. If they can't distract them, they just kind of load up on their weapons and they try to you know, overpower them, go right through. But that doesn't work with anybody opposing us either because the Lord is stronger than the strongest person. He's stronger than the rock. If you don't know who the rock is, that's okay. He's stronger. His muscles are bigger. He is so powerful that he can make universes out of nothing. The Lord reminds us in verse two that the Lord is our powerful creator. There is no power like his. No one can stop the Lord. No one can slow him down. He's the almighty. He, he has no weakness. He has no needs. He has no limitations whatsoever. I mean, everybody, even James Bond needs to sleep, but the Lord doesn't need to sleep. The psalmist says in verses three and four, he will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. Because he never gets tired. Because there's no end to his energy. He's never going to doze off while he's watching out for you. He is almighty. He is all powerful. He is the creator of universes. Inexhaustible tenacious, unwavering, fiercely protective of his children. The Lord can cast out demons. The Lord has destroyed the power of the devil. The Lord has defeated death. Who can stand against him? Who can break through his defenses? Not an army of men. Not all the powers of hell combined. He is the almighty. He is the ultimate bodyguard, and he is your guardian. So whatever it is that's threatening you in your life, whatever it is that's making you feel unsafe, it is no match for his power. Nothing at all can happen to you unless he permits it. And whatever he lets come your way, remember, whatever that is, he's still not going to let you slip and fall. So don't be afraid. That is literally the most frequent command in the Bible. Fear not. Don't be afraid. Why? What are we supposed to do instead? Trust in the Lord. It's the beginning of wisdom. Fear the Lord. Trust him to save you from danger, just as he worked through Jesus to save you from your sins. The Lord will see our church through this season of transition and rest assured that the gates of hell shall not overcome it, not with him as our bodyguard. Third, the Lord is a constant guardian for us. He is always working, even more than Uncle Steve. The Lord is working 24 hours a day. He never takes a day off. He never takes a break. He is always keeping us from danger. And this takes away another one of the strategies you see people use in the movies, right? 
When do they go and they try to get around? Well, they wait for a shift change, right? The guards come in, the other guards in. There are no shift changes with God. He is always on duty and he never takes a break. He never stops. He is alertly and attentively guarding you day and night, 24 hours a day. The psalmist says in verses five and six, the Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. He is your shade. What a great image. He protects you from the sun so you don't get burned. And from moonbeams, which a, while, a long time ago, people thought would turn people insane. Right? They were afraid of the moon and its effects on people. But the dangers of the sun, the dangers of the moon, there's no danger to God's people. Obviously, these are metaphors here. The sun represents the dangers of the day, dangers that we know about and we can see them coming toward us. The Lord is going to protect us from those dangers. He'll be our shade. He will hide us in the shadow of his protective wings like a mama bird. The moon represents the dangers of the night, the dangers that we're not aware of, the dangers that we can't see coming, the things that could happen. But these two metaphors, they're put next to one another to make one main point together. Regardless of the danger, the Lord will protect you. It's true that these threats may cause you pain and hardship and suffering in your life. They may even kill you, but they will not destroy you. Your guardian will make sure of that. Because by the same power that he used to break open the grave, he will rescue you. By his strength, he will make sure that you make it home, that you, his child in Christ, will enter the gates of the eternal city so you can meet him in the flesh and live there in his presence as his child for all time. As Jesus says in Luke 12, 32, fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. To be sure, the world is a dangerous place. There is wickedness and evil and suffering all around us. But we have a guardian. He is the Lord. So listen to this amazing promise in verse 7. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. All evil, without exception. He will keep you from all of it. No matter the threat. He will keep your life and my life, which means death has no hold on us. The Lord gave his life for our sins because he wanted his loved ones to live, and he is not going to let someone take our life away from us. Don't fear. Trust in the Lord. The Lord will guard you all day and all night. He will guard you from all evil. And the psalmist adds, he will guard you for all eternity. Verse 8, the Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Whether you're leaving home or coming home, the Lord is going to guard your journey. He will guard your journey home from church today. He will guard your journey to school or work tomorrow. He will guard your whole life's journey day after day, today and tomorrow and forever, so you can make it home to him in one piece. The Lord is your guardian. He will never be overcome. When evil draws near to you, he will keep it at bay. Your whole life, your whole future is in his hands, and his hands are not only almighty, but they are good. He loves you. God loves you more than any parent or guardian has ever loved anyone. His love for you is perfect. It is relentless. It is tireless, unfailing, strong, passionate. He will not ever stop loving and protecting his children and guarding them as they make their journey home to him. And that's why God's children throughout the centuries have been able to make bold declarations of faith, even in some of the most difficult circumstances. 
That's why the psalmist could say in Psalm 23, 4, which we read this morning, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. It's the same reason why Paul could write from prison, even with death heading his way, and say, the Lord will rescue me from every evil deed and bring me safely into his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. It wasn't that Paul knew death was going to pass him by. He was already admitting he was about to die. He knew his time was up. But he also knew he had a guardian. He knew the Lord was going to guard him from all evil, rescue him from death's cold hands, so he could be with the Lord in his heavenly kingdom. Paul knew he could trust the Lord with his whole life, and this let him rest in the Lord's provision, even in a situation where he was at death's door and he was living in prison. God wants to give you that same kind of faith. He doesn't just want to protect you. He wants you to know and believe and savor the fact that he is protecting you, rejoicing in it even. So you too can walk by faith without fear and anxiety overcoming your life because you can trust that the Lord is there for you and will always be there for you, helping you, caring for you, guarding you so you can make it home to him. It is natural to be worried about the future, especially when you hear about a big change like the pastor leaving. After all, one of the things a pastor is supposed to do is protect the sheep. When the pastor leaves, so too does the pastor's protection. But rest assured, church, the Lord will not leave you without a shepherd. He will be your shepherd. The Lord is your shepherd. You shall not want. The Lord himself will guard and protect you. He himself dwells in our midst, and he will bind up your wounds. He will continue leading us, teaching us, strengthening us, so we can all finish the long journey home. Day and night, he will watch over you. From every evil, he will protect you. Decade after decade, he will keep your foot from slipping on this journey, just as he always has, because he loves you and he loves your church. If the Lord loves CCMC that much, I trust that he will surely send another one of his under shepherds here to take care of you and lead you toward Christ in his timing. So don't be afraid or worried. The Lord is with you. He is your guardian. He will be your shepherd day and night, month after month. And his love for you and his protection of you will never, ever fail. Listen to what your shepherd guardian says in Ezekiel 34, 11 to 15. For thus says the Lord God, behold, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his sheep that have been scattered, so will I seek out my sheep, and I will rescue them from all places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. And I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries, and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the ravines, and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them with good pasture, and on the mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing land. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and on rich pasture they shall feed on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. And that is what he has done for you in Christ. Your shepherd has come. He has sought out his sheep. He has rescued us from the dangerous path that leads to destruction and brought us into the fold. Even today, the good shepherd feeds his sheep with his word. 
He lives among them by his spirit. He protects them as their guardian. He is leading them on a long journey, their long journey home. And with the Lord as our shepherd, we can press on without fear or worry because we know that he is watching over each and every step. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would help us to enjoy the blessings of our faith, to experience the strength and power of our faith in this time of need. We pray that you would help us to rest in your promise, to not let our foot slip, that you would help us to trust in your provision and you as our guardian, trusting that we are okay and will be okay because you care for us. We pray that you'd help us to seek your will both now and in these coming days as we seek to understand where you'd have us go, how you'd have us live as your people. And we pray that all throughout, you would help us to keep our focus on following Christ together, on hearing the call of our shepherd and walking with him in the path that leads to life. We pray this in his mighty and awesome name. Amen.